Christina, I'm sure you've probably gone through some of the videos in this thread and, and you've probably gathered by now that I'm kind of directing students to use the background image, um, uh, uh, one background image for the backdrop of the magazine ad, and then to compose accordingly, uh, uh, integrating your type right into the image. And I see you've gone with this other uh, option of using a color background, which is fine. I think you made it work. I think it's pretty interesting. It works. I think it's a good solid ad. Um, so I really don't have any recommendations. It's 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 definitely working out. One thing I can see, and as a professional designer, I can see an issue here, and the issue is this. And, and, and like I said, there's nothing wrong with the ad. You don't have to change anything, but think about this. Right now, it's very obvious to me the reason why you place the logo right here and the reason you place it as large. And the reason being is because she doesn't have a body, right? She's been, she's going to be cut off right there. So we have to hide that. And to me, I, I it, it's obvious that that's the, why the logo is placed where it is. So in other words, what is happening is you are forced by the image to be able to, you're allowing the image to dictate your layout choices. And that shouldn't be the case. You should make your layout choices um, and not have to be forced into any kind of specific placement or lack of placement based on the attributes of the image. If the image is forcing you to, to make um, layout and compositional uh, decisions, then maybe it's time to think about a different image, all right? So the, 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 this logo placement, the size of the logo and the placement is not what I would call specifically utilitarian because it's just enormous. The logo is just enormous in the page. Now, one option would be to just use a small purple strip right there, right underneath here, there, then go back to your original color. That way we can utilize the bottom of the ad as an exit strategy to reinforce branding by placing our logo in the area where the viewer is going to exit the page, and that's the lower right-hand side. So again, in summary, what my recommendation is, is just to, to use a little strip right there, just to cover her up, right? So we know, she, we know she doesn't have the rest of the body, but we can't leave her just severed like that. So we'll just add a little strip of purple right there, then continue the teal color, move all everything up in the ad a little bit. And uh, shoot for alignment, okay? There's your left margin, stick with it, right? There's stick with that alignment right there. So align your, your that subhead, that subhead, align all of that, um, and then align this as well. So it's gonna reduce the size of this, make sure your left margin for this paragraph is the same as your right. So that's gonna be much considerably more narrow. And then you can move this up in the composition. At that point, you can take the logo, place it right here, and, um, and then of course you have to include the ever important contact information, which isn't included in this ad, so it's really important that you do that. I think it'll help the page mechanics a little bit, really help the spatial relationships based on scale. And um, I, it'll improve alignment, which of course will in turn improve hierarchy and page harmony. So try those changes. I highly recommend making those changes. I'd like to see those changes reflected in your final magazine ad. So let me know if you have any questions at all. I'd be glad to make any necessary clarifications. All right, great start, Christina. Thank you very much.